Mark, what did you make of Steve saying that? I think the terms hostage and forced are being overused. Because the Oklahoma City Thunder, just because Paul George walks into an office and says that he wants you to trade him on Wednesday or Thursday, that don't mean you have to do it by Friday or Saturday okay. to help the Clippers have a dynamic duel. That's one. However, for the integrity and long-term viability of the NBA or any business, you want contracts to have validity to them. That's the difference between the NBA and the NFL. When training camp starts for the NBA, all of the players are going to be there. We know that right now. Mm -hmm. We don't know who's going to be at an NFL con um, uh, training camp for that exact same reason, because their contracts don't necessarily have the same validity to them. Yeah, because they're non-guaranteed. But l let, right. me, let me go back to the previous piece of it, because, yes, you can say Paul George can't, doesn't necessarily have to get what he wants. But in the new reality, which is what Steve Kerr is talking about, if a superstar wants out, he can force his way out. There's Anthony Davis, perfectly healthy, barely playing last year. It became a farce, right? What, the, the second half of the New Orleans Pelicans season last year became a complete joke. And it would have destroyed the franchise had they not gotten ridiculously lucky and gotten Zion. That sort of made everything smoothed over. But I think Steve has a point when he says this is sort of a dangerous precedent for the NBA. It is a dangerous precedent because you want contracts to have validity to them. That allows a team to do a lot of planning. If you're OKC and you, you sign Paul George to a four-year deal, you're hoping that you can acknowledge building around he and Russell Westbrook for the next couple of seasons versus him walking in saying he wants to get moved. But again, he's already under contract. You can look at him and say, Mr. George, I know you don't want to be here. I know you want to get moved, but let me take a deep breath and see if this is what's best for my team. And like the Pelicans did with AD, they didn't just move him when he said he wanted to get moved. Right. They wait till the Lakers got the number four. Right. They wait till they got the number one. They knew they were going to get Zion, and then they moved him. OKC could have did the exact same but it thing. But did, it did make the second half of the Pelican season last year a joke, right? It that did. shouldn't have been a terrible team. They had made the playoffs the year before. I know they lost Boogie Cousins. But they're, they're, it, it ruined their year. And if Paul George really wanted to go there, look, it's one thing to, to be a star going into the final year of your mm -hmm. contract and inform the team, I'm not going to resign. Right. So if you, wanna, if you want to get something from me, you're best off moving me now. That's one thing. To basically say, I signed a four-year contract knowing if it didn't go well, I'm leaving after one, that's a different but thing. But that's my, that's my point. He didn't know he was leaving after one because they didn't have to move him. Right. They chose to move him. Why? Because they felt like they got a better return. That's how trades work. And what Paul George actually did to the Clippers is what Kawhi didn't do to the Raptors. Sign a long-term deal and after one of those years say he didn't want to be there anymore. That's a good point. Where did they both go? Of course, they went to Los Angeles, and I cannot watch this enough times. Here was the very <laughs> enthusiastic response of their owner, Steve Ballmer, yesterday. I have these notes, but I got to say I'm just fired up to be here today. It's pretty cool. Pretty damn cool. Woo! I don't play basketball. Mo money, mo money, mo money, mo. T tell me you don't want to go play for that guy. Just watching that press conference, I want to go play for him. I wanted to go play for him when I saw where he ranked among the richest people in the world. Yes, I, 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 as I've said many times, I'm open to being adopted by him if and that's still an option. And he's a fellow option. Michigander, so I'm, I'm actually happy to see that the Clippers have a level of validity in that marketplace that they've truly never had. Not with teams that got to the playoffs, even with Lob City. Clearly not before the day they arrived. So now the Clippers are valid playing in the Staples Center and going head to head against the Lakers for the battle of the buck and for the fans. There is no question that is the current epicenter of the basketball world as we know it. We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.